the lobster hatchery is like a long-term investment. It's, a, it's an insurance policy for the fishing and, and cultural heritage of lobster fishing around the coast here. It's not a massive industry, but it's a very high value product, which makes it really very important to the wee local economies dotted around, especially the first and fourth. And so we started up um, the hatchery literally with just a demonstration and a, a kind of education container and it was quite a few seasons before we could actually get the, the grant funding to go into what we call production which is hatching, rearing and then releasing um, the smaller lobster-like uh, baby lobsters and it gives them hundreds of times more chance of survival in the wild. So the production container at North Berwick Harbour um, is there so that we have an area that we can take our larvae which we collect from our hen room and we can bring them on through the four stages of molting to a juvenile lobster which they can then be released back into the sea. Um, if you come and visit us you will see we have 16 larval tubs where you can see each day's larval collection and we have a, a fancy system of uh, aqua hives where we can store our juvenile lobsters in. So uh, this is the hen room, this is where uh, we put all the females uh, with the eggs in. Uh, we put one in each individual box um, and then the system flows down and then in the morning we'll come in and we'll have thousands of larvae in this tub here. Um, so they're in here for approximately about a week and the larvae will slowly hatch out the eggs uh, over that period of time. Uh, the water is kept at about 13 degrees uh, and that just uh, encourages the larvae to hatch. Um, so every now and again we have to check whether the, uh, the lobster has any more eggs. Um, so we first of all check that they have bands on and then we'll pull them out. And as you can see this one still has plenty of eggs. So these are a really brown colour. Uh, these are very ripe so uh, within the next three or four days these are all hatched. So once the, uh, the larvae have hatched in the hen room, we bring them into here, into our production container, and we uh, count them individually into one of these incubators here. Um, we can have up to about six to 7,000 a day, so you can imagine counting uh, takes a very long time. Um, so in here, we have uh, this air hose with an air brick at the bottom, um, and it swells them round um, to essentially just keep them afloat, uh, but to also try and help uh, us separate them because they will eat each other. So I'm just getting out the juvenile stage 4 larvae and then we pop them in the aqua hive tray over here. So we do that just because at this point in their life they're able to swim around independently and then when they're able to do that they can swim around and eat all their brothers and sisters that can't actually swim. North Berwick, funnily enough, although it's the Beeritz of the North for the visitors that come to the town, it's also the Beeritz of the North for the lobsters and we have a great uh, concentration of lobsters around this area. But the problem was that we don't know where we are on the verge of collapsing. Um, there are many, many more fishermen now fishing for lobster than there were in even 30, 40 years ago. Uh, so much so that they come across from Fife and up from Dunbar and down from Preston Pans to fish in this area. And that, you know, that's another reason to keep, keep things going here, to keep putting back what is taken out. Uh, this is a buried hen that we've just caught and, and banded. Um, and because it's got eggs, um, the, this sort of lobster the, the hatchery will take and they'll, they'll take these eggs, uh, wait for them to uh, cast off the lobster and, and hatch. Uh, creel fishing is uh, the most sustainable form of, of fishing because the, the bycatch that we're getting is released uh, and it's healthy, it's, um, it's not damaged in any way by catching it and it's great working with the hatchery to, to make it even more sustainable. Um, so us giving our buried hens to the hatchery 
will make a real difference to the stocks, you know, bringing in more juveniles with a higher life expectancy. So it'll be really interesting to see how it all progresses over the years and um, hopefully we can get more fishermen on board, not just from North Berwick but from further afield to really build that because uh, you know, there's quite a few young guys coming into the industry and it'd be great to have the stocks there for the future to continue fishing but in a more sustainable and uh, eco-friendly way. So the hatchery is a form of, of non-punitive fisheries management technique so we're able to maintain the sustainability of the stock without having to financially penalise the fishermen. Uh, well, we've got a uh, minimum size uh, that we can catch um, and what that allows is the, the stock of lobsters left in the sea to be old enough that they've actually they've been able to breed a few times before they're caught. So uh, when, we, when we catch them, we're catching lobsters about seven years old, they've already had breeding cycles beforehand. So uh, yeah, allowing the stocks to kind of recover. A healthy lobster population would indicate a very healthy marine environment. Lobsters are very sensitive to changes in temperature, uh, to any chemicals in the water, uh, anything like that. Um, and it shows a good vibrant local marine population. To be honest, when I first came I didn't really know much about lobsters at all. And but I found it really interesting to learn that it takes them five to eight years to become like catchable size and considering that and the survival rate being so low in the wild I find it really interesting that this place is really needed for the lobster larvae here in the area. We're very lucky that we have this facility so students can actually get some physical hands-on working experience with live creatures in an aquaculture situation. Uh, we, every year we have uh, Stirling University students that come down. We work in partnerships and relationships with uh, Harriet Watt uh, University students. Locally we work with the Scottish Seabird Centre Educational Department and we have school children in and groups uh, and teach them about ecosystems, marine biology of the lobsters and sustainable fishing in East Lothian. To learn something about what happens in your local environment. Today we've got a bit of organised chaos with the local primary trees coming down to visit us. It's fantastic for us to have such a big group and it's great for them because they're learning all about things that happen all round about their own harbour in North Berwick. They're learning about wildlife, they're learning about sustainability and they're learning about um, just the anatomy of the lobster and its life cycle. And if they just remember a few things, and even the sort of scary, creepy, crawly quant content of it, then, you know, that's something that will stick with them and may well interest them to go into marine biology later. So also at the hatchery, the public are very interested to see our larvae and our juveniles, but because we don't actually physically own the female lobsters that supply us with the larvae, um, the public uh, very generously work towards our V-Notch uh, sponsoring scheme whereby they can name a lobster, they get a certificate and we can release the lobster back into the sea. V-Notching is a sustainable proven method, a uh, conservation method of uh, putting a little notch into the lobster's tail which doesn't harm the lobster. So this is one of the buried hens that's uh, released all her eggs uh, and she's been lucky enough to be sponsored so we, uh, we bring them down to the pier and we'll put a little v-notch in their tail here um, and this v-notch will last about uh, one or two molts uh, which is about two years uh, for a lobster this size um, and essentially means if a, a fisherman catches her he'll have to put her back else uh, they incur quite a big fine. So this doesn't hurt the lobster it's a, uh, just like clipping their nails. And here in the UK we have the European lobster growing all around our coastline and um, the result of other fisheries collapsing, 95% of our shellfish gets exported. So the local fishermen here in North Berwick are bucking the trend of exporting everything to the countries that don't have any lobster left 
by uh, keeping 95% of their catch goes to our local outlet at the harbour here. Um, how fresh can it get? How local can it get? Zero carbon footprint, 98% protein and available to the general public uh, just to try lobster and chips as opposed to fish and chips. But I am registered as a first fish buyer with Marine Scotland which means I can buy my lobsters and crabs etc and langoustines direct from the pier. So that's what we do. The fishermen catch them, they bring them to me and we're lucky enough that many customers come along and they order them and we cook them to order. Well North Berwick has grown and grown, it is a vibrant community, its juxtaposition to Edinburgh means that it's very very popular for day visitors and the population itself has really grown so I think the, the sea, the harbour, the lobster fishing, you know they've been fishing here for over 800 years so it's an integral part of the community and we're trying to do our best to sustain that and keep it going for future generations. Yeah. So that's your one eye in there. That's a hard eye and a soft eye. And then you've got your eye into the parlour bit. And this is a that's a bit for your bait band. My family's been involved in the fishing for about 300 years, over 300 on uh, my grand, grandmother's side it was making creels before I left the school, you know, eight year old we were sitting in the house at night knitting nets and whatever, you know. <laughs> at the moment I'm making creels for another fisherman, Jack Dale, plus I make gear for myself and sell it on. Now we get the, the wood cut at the sawmill, you know, we give them the sizes. And they cut it and then we, we put it all together. But years ago it was, we had to f source all the wood ourselves, cut it all by hand, make it find flat stones that we had to go raking along the beach for to make the weights. And basically what I do now is just fuse the ends so the knots don't slip out, you know. Yeah, I would like to see the old traditional East Coast Creole, yeah, kept going, plus the, most of the boats are going on to these parlours now, we like, you know, so. Well, the amount of boats that are working up off here nowadays is, yeah, I mean, it probably is a good thing that you're putting something back in, you know. But I like to see the old traditional Scottish handmade Creole, like, which functions perfectly well. So when a lobster gets to a, a stage four, stage five malt lobster, we are then ready that we can release them back into the sea. We've uh, speeded up the process of their growth rate by about half by warming the water up in the hatchery. So we have to acclimatize them back down to sea level before we make a bit of an event and work with local groups and charities and friends and volunteers and take them and put them back into the sea. What we have seen um, anecdotally here is over the seasons that we have been releasing the, the catches is that the minimum, many of the lobsters now are nearer the minimum catching size and that shows a pressure on the population. And the females are also maturing earlier, the result of which they have fewer eggs and their eggs are all are less viable. It's one of the species where the big the bigger and the older the female, the more viable the eggs are. And these are a couple of things that we see that have indicated that the lobster popular or the lobster fishery is under pressure. Again, a good reason for us starting to restock it now because, you know, come 10 years time, who knows exactly what the picture will be. Uh, and so it's a long time investment before we will see the returns of us helping to restock the first and fourth.